thought you could sneak up on me, didn't you? <laughs> you can't sneak up on an old assassin like me. Uh-uh. None of you little boys can. Come on in. What do you need? You want me to tell that story again? I've told it a thousand times. <laughs> you want me to tell it a thousand and one times. Well, come on in. But before I tell it, I want you to know, little Asher, don't you start crying. <laughs> okay. I'll let you cry at the sad parts if you'll let me me cry too. Reuben, you take care of him. And Jonathan, don't you laugh, especially at me. I'm still pretty strong, you know. Well, you know, the story starts a long time ago. Back when I, well, there's a reason why I was called the zealot. I wasn't just a zealot. I was Sicarii, assassin. I don't know how many people that knife had killed. More than one. Less than a hundred. But you see, I met Jesus. Oh, I really met Jesus. You see, the people that I loved to stick with this knife were Roman officials and tax collectors. <laughs> and I'd been watching this one tax collector. Yes, Matthew. Well, I had heard that he had become one of the followers. And not long after that, I was pushing my way through a crowd. I was going to get me a tax collector. And in stepped Jesus. He said to me for the first time and many, many times that those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And he healed me that day. Yes, he healed me. Why do I still have the scar? <laughs> well, it was from a fight that I almost lost, but even when you're healed, you still have scars to remind you of where you've been, and what you've done, and all of these scars remind me that I've been healed, and I'm a man of peace now. Peace, of course. Well, anyway, it wasn't long after that that we went out. Jesus sent us out two by two to proclaim the good news of the new kingdom that Jesus was the head of, to heal people. Yes, I have healed people. <laughs> no, Jesus healed people. You're right. I just was the one's hands that he was using. But Jesus did something really strange. He put me and Matthew together. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. Why, Matthew almost wet himself when he heard that I was going to be his partner. <laughs> but the strangest thing, thing happened. We became friends. Yes, best friends. Friends for life. Friends because Jesus put us together and reminded us of who we were that we weren't anymore. Yeah, we were together, me and Matthew. Well, 
Well, we did so many things. We watched him heal the multitudes to feed thousands, to calm the seas and the storm, and to bring people to peace. Yep. It was a great joy. Until that day that Jesus said, we're going to the Passover. We're going back to Jerusalem. And he kept talking about how he was going to, to be suffering and crucified and rise again on the third day. Well, Peter, he would have none of it. And the rest of us, we kind of ignored it. Because, you see, we had been planning. In fact, we had been arguing. You see, John and Peter thought that both of them were the leaders, and Nathaniel and Philip, they were the smartest. And we were arguing over who would be at Jesus' right hand and who would be on his left in this new kingdom. <laughs> Me? Oh, I'm not smart enough. I was going to be the secretary of peace. Well, there's no more war in the new kingdom. Matthew, we were deciding that he was going to be the secretary of the treasury. We started having our suspicions about old Judas. <laughs> well, on the road, we were arguing, and Jesus, he caught us again and told us again that he was going to Jerusalem to be crucified and to rise again. And how we just didn't understand why he was talking so. Especially when we got up to Bethany. When we got up to the Bethany on the top of the Mount of Olives. And there, well, the people started gathering. Like we knew they would if they just knew that the Messiah was coming. They gathered and they started shouting. They cut palm trees out, palm branches out of the trees, and they started waving them and throwing their cloaks in the road, and we walked down that road so proud while the crowds were singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> it was a glorious day. We went all the way down to the temple, through the gates into the temple, Jesus looked around and said, come on, boys, let's go. So he went back up to Bethany and spent the night. Well, the next day, Jesus, with all of us following behind, walked right into the temple again. And you could see it. I can tell when somebody's getting angry. And Jesus was getting angry. You could see it in his face. You could see it in his eyes. He began to rush at the money changers' tables and he turned them over and he opened the cages of the doves and it was chaos in the place. <laughs> we thought this is when it's all going to begin. The money changers were scrambling on the ground trying to scramble scramble after the rolling coins, and everybody was after those coins. And there was so much noise, but above the noise, we heard Jesus saying, My <coughs> Father's house is a house of prayer, but you, you have turned it into a den of thieves. But over on the side, you could see, you could see the leaders the chief priests and the elders. They were gathered together and they were talking about how they were going to get rid of him. We knew we could see. Well, that night we went on up to Bethany again. 
And every day in the temple, Jesus was preaching, teaching, loving, building people up. It was glorious. Then it began, the questions. On Wednesday, the chief priests and the elders, they met him at the gate to the temple and challenged him. By whose authority do you do these things? Who told you to get, do all of this? And Jesus did what he always does. He answered a question with a question. I'll tell you by whose authority I do these things. If you will tell me by whose authority John did his baptisms. Well, that threw him for a loop. They went over to the side and they began to discuss among themselves. Well, if we say that, that John baptized by human authority, well, then we'll have a riot on their hands because all the people believe John to be a prophet. But if we say that it came from God, then he's going to tell us, well, then why didn't you believe him? And so they come back and they say, we don't know. <laughs> they don't know. And Jesus said, then neither will I tell you by whose authority I do these things. And he taught. And he taught. Well, then somebody else came up. A Pharisee, I think. Very rich man. You could tell by his clothes. He came up to Jesus and said, good teacher. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes? Well, Jesus said, give me a coin. Give me a denarius. And so the man gave him a denarius and Jesus showed it to us all and said, whose image is on this coin? You're right, it's Caesar. Of course it's Caesar. And so Jesus said, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. Yes, your heart. <laughs> That shut him up. Well, then the Sadducees came. And the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. Can you believe that? They don't believe in the resurrection. <laughs> well, they asked him. They asked him one of the silliest questions I've ever heard. They told a story. There's a man in a certain town who married a woman. And before they could have children, he died. Well, the man had six brothers. And every one of the brothers married the woman in turn, and not one of them had children with her. And finally, the woman died. No children. Well, in the resurrection, Jesus Whose wife will she be? And Jesus said, Don't you know that we will ne neither be or nor have marriage in heaven, but we will all be the children of God? But that's not the point. You don't even know your own scriptures. Don't you remember in the story of the burning bush with Moses? How God said through the burning bush, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of, yes, Jacob. <laughs> God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. And from that moment on, they wouldn't ask any more questions. Well, that was Wednesday. And on Thursday, Jesus sent his disciples 
Well, not all of us. He actually just sent Peter and John. Sent those two into Jerusalem, into town, to go find a place for us to eat the Passover. And that night, we gathered in that upper room. Philip got to ask all the questions, just like you, Asher, this year, the youngest. Matthew got to answer all the questions because he was the oldest. <laughs> I love to remind him of that. And during the meal, Jesus took a loaf of bread and he lifted it up gave thanks for it and broke it. Yes, just like we do every first day of the week. And gave it to all of us and said, take this and eat it, for this is my body broken for you. Yes, you know those words, don't you? And then he took a cup, filled it with wine, lifted it to heaven, and gave thanks. Yes, just like we do every first day of the week. And gave it to all of us and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for the sins of many. Yes, you know those words. Changed it forever. And when the supper was over, we sang a hymn. And we all went to the garden to pray. Nobody noticed that Judas didn't go with us. And he asked us to stay by the gate and to pray with him while he went inside. And it was late and we were tired and we kept falling asleep. And Jesus kept coming back out and saying, can't you stay up with me just for a little while? Then the third time, he came out and said, it's time. And that's when we heard the mob a mob of people with torches and clubs and swords. And they came right up to the gate and Judas was at the head and he came up right up to Jesus and kissed him and said, Rabbi. And one of the guards started to rush to arrest him. And I, ha, whoosh, yep, his right ear, clean off. <laughs> And no, Jesus just picked it up and put it right back on. He said, it's enough. And he said to me one last time, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Oh, I wish I could hear those words again. Oh, I do in my head all the time. We scattered. All of us went a different way, but I saw that Peter was hanging behind and following the crowd as they took Jesus away in chains. So I decided to follow too. And when we got to the courtyard of Caiaphas, they had taken Jesus inside. And they put him on trial there. Yes, it was illegal, but they were doing it anyway. And then this girl came up and she said she recognized Peter. Well, that's when I decided that she might recognize me and I left. I went to go find Matthew. Matthew. 
For when the sun rose, the trial was over. And they had brought Jesus to that, that, that Roman Pilate. And they had already been out bribing the crowd telling them to make Judas, to make Pilate set Barabbas for free. Yeah, the same Barabbas who is now the preacher in the next town over. <laughs> Everybody was changed by Jesus. in that crowd when Pilate brought Jesus out swollen and beaten with a crown of thorns on his head and a purple robe draped across his bloody shoulders he said I find nothing wrong with this man he's innocent well the crowd began to shout crucify him crucify him bring us Barabbas bring us Barabbas Pilate again said, but he's innocent. Your leaders, your elders have brought, it to me, brought him to me. I've examined him, and Herod has also, and we find nothing wrong with this man. But they shouted all the more, crucify him, crucify him, set Barabbas free. And the louder they shouted, the louder I got, no, no! <coughs> Pilate had him led away to be crucified. And we followed. And when the cross got too heavy for Jesus to carry, they pulled Simon the Cyrene out of the crowd. <laughs> yes, another Simon. carried it to the hill. And on that hill, they drove the nails through his hands and his feet. And they lifted him up in between two criminals and hung him. And yes, Asher, it's okay to cry. Because you see, they crucified our Lord. But then a whole parade of people began to walk by and they would spit at him and they would make fun of him. If you're the king of the Jews, come down off the cross. Send the angels down to save you. You saved others, save yourself. And the more they cried out, the more angry I became, and the more I forgot those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And when the Roman soldiers began to gamble for his clothing, that's when I lost it. And I grabbed for my dagger and I started to rush through the crowd. And that's when Jesus lifted himself up. And I know he wasn't speaking directly to me and yet he was speaking right to me. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Ah! cried out and he breathed his last and he died on the cross for me 
and for you, and for you, and for you, and for every one of you, and your mommies and daddies too. He died for all of us on that cross. And so now, I spend my time telling these stories. Oh yes, the rest of the story will come when you come again. But I tell these stories and I carve these crosses just for you.